Yeah, all right, guys, welcome to Team Shoe. I was looking over your uh, forms you filled out for me earlier. Uh, all looks in order, except uh, I think you guys might have screwed up on one question. Do you remember what you wrote for uh, what your goal is for today? To have fun. Oh my God, wrong answer. I hate it when you guys do this. I'm coaching the other team. That's it, that's it. I don't know what I'm going to do with you guys. Uh, so what about you guys? Do you want to have fun today? Yes, we do. Absolutely not. We are ruthless killing machines. All right. Rob, I found my team. Life is fun, and so is Candlepin Bowling. There have been dozens of bowling shows on TV before, but we're not them, and we don't want to be. Dan, Shu, Gothi are coaches one team of talented kids, and I, Rob Taylor, coach another. We're a different type of show, and we're going to turn your notion of bowling show upside down. We are the new generation. Welcome to Candlepin New Generation, a show that encourages its bowlers to spike the ball when they get a strike. Candlepin New Generation will not be held responsible for any damages to the premises or any personal injury which may result. Do not attempt this at home. Well, feel free to and patronize your local bowling centers, but he's Dan Gothier, I'm Rob Taylor. We have changed our shirts and ties because it is a new week featuring 15 to 18 year olds. We've got four of the best in the game. Shoe's got one team, I've got another. Dan, why don't you introduce us to our team, one of which we've met before. Yeah, we start right off with Renee Whitelaw. She was just on last week, Rob, and she won her first trophy. I consider it just a warm-up for her to try to win her second trophy. Um, she has never not made our show in any attempt to try out. And last year, just like this year, she was also in two age groups. So it's a tall task moving up to the 15 to 18s. But if anybody can handle it, I'm sure she can. I agree. She'll be bowling with a smooth-talking, three-step walking man of the people. His highest single was a huge 174, and last year he nearly completed a 28-pin comeback. This year he doesn't plan on being behind. He is Michael the Ladies' Man Pelchat. It's going to be tough to beat, but my team, I think, will be up to the task. We're leading off with Sonia Richard, and between her, her sister Sage, and her mom Marion, they joined the Griffies and the Mannings as the great sports families. She has a high single of 151. She's a mass state champion. It runs in the family blood, and she is bowling with a man who is in his first tournament of champions appearance, Tim Douglas, but he won a $1,000 scholarship at the ICBA championship, so he can handle pressure. He's got a 111 average, a 141 high single, and is one of the fastest bowling improving, fastest improving bowlers out there. The show's been getting a lot of great viewership over the past few weeks, Dan. We have heard that Liam Fitzgerald Ledger, our sideline reporter, is out there. You've been getting a little extra attention, Liam. I've been getting a lot of attention since the show started, Rob. Hi, Liam. I'm a ladies' man now, Rob. Show's done nothing for my dating life, Rob. Well, we can't work miracles. We will have our ladies take the lane, Sonia Richard and Renee Whitelaw. Sonia is in the black, and you know who Renee is. You saw her last week on the show as she earned a 12 to 14 age group championship. She's going to try to do it again this week and earn herself a spot in the 15 to 18 year old championship bracket. Sonya leading things off, burying the head pin, leaving just a nine. And now both of our ladies with great spare opportunities. Oh, night. Oh, oh man, no. that looked like I the spot. I loved where she hit that. Renee's gonna try to pick it up to an yeah, no break breaks, for her No too. breaks for either lady on that shot. Both of our ladies maybe want to be a little bit fuller. This does give us a chance to take a look at our keys to the match, Dan. And for my team, it is just keep it close. I know both of my bowlers can throw marks in a flurry, so just keep the pressure on the other team. What about you, Dan? Uh, I told my bowlers to keep the puck out of the net, Rob. I'm, that's a metaphor, I'm uh, sure. A meta what now? I figured. Okay, Sonia Richard. Nine to nine early on. And Sonia looking to be right back in that pocket. She veers a little right. Sonia has bowled in our championships before and tells Renee she drops the hammer early on. Could easily be a strike on spare, too, after that first Could, spot. she earned it. Sonia plows through that head pin. She's going to look for a big out here. Sonia, we mentioned, has been on our championships before. She bowled with a young Ooh. gentleman named Stephen Powers two years ago in the 12 to 14 age group. She bowled with Jamie Schmidt last season and was the runner-up in this age group. She's looking to do it again. The younger sister's been on multiple times, too. Another bowling family. Her mom's a professional bowler, and she just got her driver's license. Very nice. Drove herself here today, Rob. And let's hope that by the time this airs, she hasn't yet gotten in an accident. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. Renee Whitelaw. Looking at double. Strike, a little oh. full on the two pin. So that leaves her a half Worcester minus the five. Big, big Renee sweep on that ball for uh, Sonia Richard. 
And Renee gets a tough five. Yeah, it, it's tough, like you said, because you want to make the mark count, which means getting more than 20 in two boxes, and you get your pin spread all over the lane here. So it's a ten by Sonia. She looks to try to get things going. That's a nice Renee, out. meanwhile, like, wow. phenomenal. Wow, out. yeah. I was happy with nine there. That's like another mark. We'll take it another is. look at that pretty shot as the pin's flipping across the lane. So easy to end up with a six or a seven in a box like that. Now you make it, make it count like a real mark. Now ten pin lead. Sonia Richard looking for her first mark of the match, just off the head pin, but has a nice spare lead. Oh, here's a nice. Oh, you know, I thought that was going to break right into the one-two pocket, but it didn't quite come back far enough. Still. Renee oh. has that wooden back that's lined right up at the seven, so she really just has to make the four horsemen here. Ooh. Sonia picks it up. What a nick. Nice and light. I'll say she hit the head pin right in the ear hole. Kisses it, and then carries the one in back. A pretty shot by Richard, and that's going to get this game nice and evened up. Yeah, the eight fills even it up. You're absolutely right. Eight pins the difference. Sonia Richard out of Seabrook. Oh, taking on Renee Whitelaw from Plymouth. I didn't realize Renee Whitelaw also plays volleyball, looking at her information sheet. I've Sorry. always been fascinated by looking at her favorite food being chicken nuggets. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Sonia Richard as well, a volleyball player. Nuggets. We would have a round two between these two ladies on the court. Oh, are they? Really? Nice. That'd be like me playing you, Rob. Spikes all over the place. Sonia, oh, just full. Plows through that four pin. I wanted to thank you for our volleyball match. Oh, what a Eve. shot! Not decapitating me, I appreciated it. Anytime, I knew you had to fulfill yeah. this obligation. That's a nice nine. Good box by oh. Sonia. Yeah, we're gonna get a couple nines. Renee's got away from her at the end there. Heck of a spare bit. Let's take another 51 look at that to 50. flipped over. So we've got a nice close match to work with here. We've had a lot of big leads in the past few weeks. We've seen some huge comebacks. It'd be nice to have a nice little back and forth showdown. And here we have two bowlers of similar builds and heights. Similar styles. Tim Douglas in the red throwing the first ball. He's the Alley Cat Lanes native. Michael Pelchat in the navy, Pilgrim Lanes. Michael held on to his ball a split second longer than he wanted to there. Had a low trajectory, but held the air a little bit. There he goes. That's a lot better. And right in the pocket. Looking to carry. Ooh, no Much luck. better ball on a second ball for Pelchet. Sometimes it takes our bowlers one ball to get in the swing of things. They know they're on TV here. And uh, you just got to get that one ball out of your system. Pelchat bowled on the program last year. He that went evens. up against Josh Daly in the 12 to 14 age group. Mm -hmm. Came so close to competing a 20 plus pin comeback. Fell just short. We had a lot of monster comeback attempts last year that all fell a tiny bit short. We saw already one started this year with some ago. giant ones. Meanwhile, Douglas off the head pin, but getting a very makeable spare lead. Both well, of our both bowlers, bowlers with two pins. I mean, they both got to be happy. Douglas has got the trickier one, as a matter of fact, now. Okay, do you want to be on the right wood? I am tempted to go to the right wood. Cap it. Well, he goes left, trying to plow it through. Now, he's surprised, but I'm not where he hit it. I mean, it's, uh, I wouldn't have expected to get it where he hit it there. He wanted to be high and really yeah, just high. drive e Either back. cap, right? But uh, back cap maybe a little cleaner. So a tough eight for Tim. And you have to put those frustrations aside when you have a shot that didn't go that you thought was going to go, and you got to make your tens because right. those two pins could come back. It was an even match before that, and now you get a two pin lead for Mike's team. This is Tim's first time on our championship shows. He is a young 15 years old, and he is the all events champion of the nice ICBA tournament. Every year, the ICBA holds a tournament. Oh! Both bowlers throwing some really nice first balls and showing you why they got where they are here. Both bowlers can play the wood here, too, to pick up their shots. Mike has a little leeway. Tim all over the wood. Well picks played. His up. Very well played. And oh, oh no. man. Mike's, oh, I said he could. He caught Mike, the cap. Well, he hit no man's land is what it was. Yeah. Like I said, any anything further right had it. And honestly, if he had been a little, a little further left. left, he had it. He kind of caught the one spot on the cap to push the wood straight back and not touch the pin. Okay. And he's surprised, too. But Take another look at Douglas's there as he sweeps it over. Again, now it's Mike's turn to refocus because that's gone. Put it behind you. Don't let it affect the next ball you throw. As we were saying, Douglas, the 2013 ICBA champion. Bowlers come from all over to compete in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Favorable action ball. The top boy and girl get a $1,000 prize, and Tim was the winner, and he's looking to put up two in a row here. And sneaks just left. Pelchat has a chance to strike a comeback here. And he did. And he's on it. That's a very nice ball. That's the difference in Mike's game today than what we saw two or three years ago with Mike, because uh, making spares wasn't really his forte a couple of years ago. And he's gotten ball. much better at it. 
Right, he's always had the big first ball ever since we first met him. Right. But the big difference between when he was an 88-89 bowler was he didn't have much of a second ball, and now he's developing it. He's still got a ways to go, but he's already throwing some big scores. For example, I believe he's got a 174 high single and a 394 triple. It's not going to take much for him to start popping 400. Although, you know, there's one that got away. And again, a little inexperienced, but I get to that. And so now Tim wants to be on the right wood on the left side of it, I say. Too far and left. Too yeah. far left. Oh, the ball almost bounced back. It shows you how bad Mike's first ball got away. Is he put the second ball right there in the pocket again? Had the chance to regroup. So going into the half, we're going to have a very tight match. When we come back, we're going to have the chance to watch a contestant take on the Pro Bowler David Godwin after the break, and then we'll see how this match concludes. Make sure you join us after the break. We got a five-pin difference. Woburn Bulladrome, established in 1940, has 40 lanes with automatic scoring, including bumper lanes, glow bowling, and more, featuring four different birthday party packages. If you bring the cake, we'll do everything else, including food, drink, and paper goods. Come spend your Friday and Saturday nights with us when the lights go off and the music and fun go on. Enjoy our game room, check out our pro shop, or join a winter league. We're right by I-93 and I-95 with plenty of parking available. Woburn Bulladrome. For more info, go to www.woburnbowl.com. When he sees a 7-10 split, he helps them get back together. He always has the right of way. Those shoes, no. The pins don't rob him, he robs the pins. He is the most interesting bowler in the world. I don't always go bowling, but when I do, I go can the pin. Keep bowling, my friends. The Beat the Pro Challenge is brought to you by ASG Bowl, the exclusive representative for the BPAA Smart Buy program, insurance solutions for the Candlepin proprietor. Welcome back to Candlepin New Generation. Liam Fitzgerald Ledger, sideline reporter extraordinaire, is going to try to take down David Godwin. Shoe is with Liam. Thanks, Rob. Uh, as you said, he's been our sideline reporter, Liam has, for the entire season. Liam, after watching all those other bowlers bowl for the whole season, do you think you've learned any tips that you're going to use today to try to take down Dave? Yes. Yes, I have. And there's something else. I'm older now. 13. Whoa, that extra year is probably going to put you over the top, right? Yep. Well, you're going to be trying to win this set. You've already seen two bowlers do it. I'm going to wish you some luck here. We're going to see, uh, see what Dave's thinking about this match from Rob. Well, Dave's trying to rebound after a loss last week. He's one of the best <laughs> in the game for a reason. He threw a 221 in the World Championships up in Canada. Can you take us through that string a little bit? Um, this is really a bunch of big blur. I mean, you just when you're so focused and everything's going your way, you just don't think about anything else. And then <clears throat> strikes come quick. It just kind of happened so fast. It was awesome. It's best feeling, second best feeling I've ever had. You were 18 at the time too, right? Yeah, that is correct. 18 years old. Yep. Got a little more experience now. We'll see if you can take down Liam. Best of luck. Good luck, Dave. Let's hear for Liam, everybody. So, Liam Fitzgerald Ledger, we've seen his phenomenal work on the sidelines of the lanes. We're going to see how he does on the lanes today against David Godwin. The 221 was the second best feeling he's ever had, Rob. I'm kind of glad you didn't follow up on the first, but maybe off camera we're going to find out what that I'll was. I'll find out. We can talk to him about it next week. Dave's off the head pin again, but a makeable spare lead. He's going easy on you, Liam. What do you think? Uh, I think I think he's trying to get me into the groove, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I think I do. I'd love if you had a shot Ooh. to get in that group for a chance to win bowling balls. We've had two people do it over our week run. And so now, Dave's going to be looking for a big out. Now we're in a cluster. Should be an easy nine. Oh, and it ten. gets a ten. So you're going to need a mark, Spare Liam, my better. friend. Spare a strike and you beat him, Liam. Think you can do it? Yeah, I think I can. All right, see what you can do. Good, Good luck, luck, Liam. No matter what, you're going home with a $25 gift card. Best of luck, Liam. Uh. <laughs> so Liam Fitzgerald Ledger out of Lanes and Games in Cambridge doesn't miss a tournament. One of the great kids we have. And his first ball is right on the head pin. Oh, come on. Look at the worst break out of anybody so far. Give him a break. <laughs> if Liam makes this, the crowd's going to go nuts and with good reason. Liam needs to pick this up. And he's a little left, unfortunately. Oh. Good try by Liam. He's got one more ball here. 
He's gonna be going home with a $25 gift card, and we're not gonna let him go. We're gonna keep him on our sidelines reporting on these games. Great try by he Liam Fitzgerald Ledger, as he did, as he should, and as we all do. We'll watch more fun coming up right now. the difference here on Candlepin New Generation. Let's send it over to Liam for his analysis. It's a close match, Rob. Let's see if Mike can pull off the comeback. Thank you very much, Liam. Let's have our ladies take the lane. Renee Whitelaw versus Sonya Richard. Renee Whitelaw looking to chip into a five-pin deficit, anybody's game. So Team Shoe's down five. That's right. You gotta get used to That's that. Right. We're used to winning on Team Shoe here. Look now we're one there championship it is. Up. Renee. Very tough break. Sonya buries the head pin. A little full, but gets a nice triangle to look at. And so now, oh. White Law, where do you want to be, Dan? I want to say lower, but I don't like it. Ah, I like, like it, it there. Yeah. Ooh, man. Yeah. Wow. I wouldn't have, I mean, that's where I want to hit, but I wouldn't have been that confident about them all carrying. I hadn't really found a better spot yet. Would have liked more time to look it over. <laughs> she does a nice job getting a 10 nice out of it. Sonya got no luck on her Sonya. spare bit too. She was right on the object pin, punched straight through it. That's the second time she's done that this game. Renee cutting that lead down to four pins. Now it's in pinning range. You don't necessarily need the mark. Absolutely true. I but think these we're bowlers, see a few yeah, marks. these bowlers are good enough. That you, not like the little kids here. You're gonna see marks. Renee, so, look again in the pocket. It's almost a given. You're gonna see marks. Sonya all over that have seven pin leads. Two and one, both totally different shots. I don't see a good spot for Renee's. It's gonna not be tough low, to pick huh? up that last pin and back. Yeah, you knew the nine was going to be tough for Renee, but she hit it so light that it wasn't mm -hmm. able to take the five either. Sonya, meanwhile, and gave that a nice run. Nice ten. Oh, and very nice ten, nice ten there too. Because I thought we were going to chip another pin off, and we weren't able to there. So that was a beautiful ten by Sonya. And so our ladies, looks like they found it. They're throwing a good ball. Now they're just looking to get that. This feels like the box one of them's going to mark. Just looking for that one pin to shoot at, that makeable spare leave. For Renee again on the head pin. Sonya again on the head pin. Oh, Neither easy. Sonya's got to be right on the tip of that wood, and Renee just has to throw a good ball that's a little full on the three pin. And she's going to play the wood. Oh. Nice shot by Sonya. I was wrong. Yeah, we both were. I, you know, the second it hit it, I guess I saw the possibility, but I didn't see it before she threw the ball. And we'll take another look at Sonya's didn't, spare didn't pickup. Didn't quite pick up the angle of that pin and realize that she could hit it right in the middle and drive it to both. And so now, chance to continue building that lead. White loss, three consecutive head pins for her. That one gets away from her and she gets a tough half Worcester for it. Both bowlers off, but Sonya getting a better break out of it. And a makeable leave, some wood tucked in behind the four. Yeah, that, that wood keeps everything nice and tight up front. Kind of just got to put it in the pocket. Ah, she's just off. You see how they were all tied together there. And Renee looking at an ugly six to try to get an eight or better here. It's nice a eight. solid eight. That's all you can do with it, really. Yeah, it's hard. You get a nine, you did awesome on that one. So White Law, we've seen her accuracy, we've seen what she's been capable of. She just hasn't really had the pins go the way she's wanted to over the past couple of weeks. She's going to have to hope her partner Mike will be able to put something together for her. See if she can get a mark here at the end of the lead half. Lead up to 12. It would be important to get it down to single digits, if possible. going to try to make that impossible. But yeah, uh, it's tough. She may have a spot, though. Oh, uh, boy. It looked good coming down the alley. I could tell it was going to be a tiny bit light at the end. So Sonya wants to be on the right side. That's where she is. What a bid, and it carries. Nice shot by that's, Sonya Richard. Uh, that's an, a high level of difficulty on that shot. You have a little extra leeway than you do when it's just the 5-7 as we take another look. She's able to hit that wood first and have her ball ricochet. Almost cut it too fine. Now Sonya looking for the big fill. She's off. She'll get She's three on it. 17-pin deficit. And a great 106 game by Sonya Richard, who is all over her objects all game. A tough 95 for her name, but she was hitting all of her object pins too. Well, last year Michael Pelchat tried to complete a 28-pin comeback. This time he's going to have to complete a 17-pin comeback. Should and be nothing, uh, right? Then? Well, he has an explosive first ball, and, and that helps trying to make comebacks. You know? And you yeah. see there, off the head pin, and he's still right. got something and nice to look at. Exploded an eight. Like I said, it strikes. There's no way to get back faster than throwing strikes, and he, he can do it. I, Mike's waiting for this wood to I stop. What do you think? I kind of like the, the cap, because you, you get two pieces working for you. Maybe. And then you're nice and high, too. He's going lower. He's there. He picks it up. Outside I don't know if that's the, the way we drew it up. 
Well, it was on the cap, outside of the cap. I'll take it. It was still a good spot. Caps though. are hard to hit. And uh, we had a nice attempt there for Tim as well. Uh, that's frustrating for Tim. He has a couple straight object pins and just plucks them both out. Take another look at Mike's. Hits the cap, goes off that left side wall, and comes all the way over to take out the pins. And that's how you want to start. You get that first mark. Keeps yourself in it. And gets away from Mike again, but he's got a four horsemen with him tied up and back. Which, hit considering the ball he threw, he can't be upset with this leave. No, not at all. Especially because the hard pin it gets to seven, so you get some help in there. Ah, he squeaks left of it and punches left. through, which is tough. And then you get a nice leave here for Tim. Douglas, oh, he fears just right. He wanted to catch that wooden front. He may not have been able to hit all of that wooden front, but he definitely had some room to play yeah, with. Yeah, a red line to the right, you get a good shot. Hey, you got this tough no. break there. Again, Couldn't yeah. be too low either. It's a couple times. All right. Mike dodges a little bullet there. Douglas had the chance to really put some space. Instead, it is a seven pin difference. <laughs> Michael throwing the first ball. Uh, we both oh, missed Brooklyn. Oh, a pin fell. A pin fell. Both of us were looking at the lead and we missed the pin fall. On him. So Tim's All looking right. at a single pin. And when you got the lead, it's certainly nice to be looking at a single. Michael's Ooh, right on it. What a shot. Mike. Nice shot by Pelchat. Douglas suddenly, just gets away from him. How often do you see that happen? One bowler looking at a tougher lead, the other guy looking at an e what we consider an easy single. And if the guy makes a tougher lead before you got to hit the single, single you know, becomes a lot tougher. And it's, it reverses the other way around too. If the bowler misses the single, it always seems like that guy makes that tough lead. And now they're looking to even the matchup with a big enough fill. Mike again trying to complete a big comeback, just like last year. It's right in the thick of it, and he always seems to be. There's hey, a he's ball. on the head pin, buries it, looking Might to be get the best a little ball action he's off this the whole wall. game right there. Douglas off. He's got a spare leave though, and this is one where you have the chance to regroup and try to pick one up. Uh -oh, Peltat uh -oh, I fears right. Way off there, and he uh, had a had a piece of wood. Yeah, he couldn't be. You couldn't just hit the wood to make it. You had to have a little precision, but he definitely wanted to hit it. And that would have done it. You, you That's not where you would have wanted it, to. <laughs> <laughs> I think those weren't all places. <laughs> uh oh, what do we got here for a match? Is it even now? This is tight. 194, 194, yeah, it's tight. Gotta love that. <laughs> so one box to settle this one. If they tie, they'll throw a one box yep. roll off. Each bowler will throw one box. And Mike gotta be happy with the lead when you miss the head pin. That's you gotta nice leave break. it. All three pins tied together on the head pin. He's even got leeway, and you don't like that leave if you're Tim. So Douglas, that's well, the hope. And Mike drifted by, so I mean, that's what Tim needed. And just as important, he didn't pick up the seven pin. Surprised Mike didn't take a little longer before he shot that shot, you know? And so now Mike really wants to pick up these two. And he's on the head pin, he does it. So Tim Douglas has to make this shot to tie. Very difficult shot. And Douglas is just off, and so Michael Pelchat and Renee oh, Whitelaw are advancing it. to our championships. A stunning comeback by Michael Pelchat. Great bowling by all our contestants. We will talk to Renee and Michael after this. So for the show this year, Dan, I really want it to be about empowering the kids, you know? For kids, by kids. By kids? How's that going to work? Positions, people, positions, people, places, people, places. All right, guys, pizza's ready. Pizza! <laughs> the difference is nine. Josh has a ball to cut into that. We see big things out of him, like Josh tying the game up. And a pretty nice fair leave. These two have ice in their veins. Josh on the money. So one pin difference, Josh with the ball. It's winning time, right, Mac? It is. Hazard off the head pin, but he's got a spare leave. Josh off as well. Some friendly action to bump the lead up to seven. Hazard needs this. More importantly for Hazard, his opponent didn't shut him out. You know, he left it single digit lead. Hazard on the head pin. What a clutch shot! Josh looking to answer. He's off, so Hazard's now, gonna have a shot at it. Now this is critical for Josh. If you really want a 10 here, you don't want to make it easy. Josh does just that. So a clutch ball from here. It's all down to this. Seven for the tie, eight or more for the win. 
on the head pin. Hey, and Hazer wins. takes it with a, a hammer. <laughs> what a performance. That guy was is. the most exciting match I've seen in a long time. Uh, what's the square root of 625? This kid might actually get it, he's thinking. <laughs> Could be our first. 25? Oh my god, you're right! <laughs> Holy crap, we should give him a prize for this. Who's cooler, me or Robbie? I don't really know you guys, but I'm guessing you. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty educated guess. Pretty reasonable guess. What's the best thing you ever did in cantaloupe and bowling that you can think of, your favorite accomplishment or shot? Uh, probably, act probably actually getting a uh, hundred before. Um, um, what makes me cooler than Robbie Taylor? You're not. <laughs> Oh. Robbie, you can't put that one on TV. That was cut out. We're going to edit that one out. Welcome back to Candlepin New Generation. Renee Whitelaw and Michael Pelchat are advancing to our finals. And Sue, you've got Renee. I'm getting a little sick of her up here. <laughs> I was going to ask her if she was getting sick of seeing me up here, Renee. Huh? No. No, because as long as you see me, it means you keep winning, right? Yeah. Are you getting better each time? Possibly. The scores are going up. I see them going up each time. I'm wondering if it helps. If you think uh, you expect you're going to go even higher in the next match? Yeah. You may need to. Who's your opponent, Rob? Shannon Scribner and Michael McGinty. Ooh, yeah. that's a challenging team. You going to be up for that challenge? Hopefully. I can't wait to see it. Nice bowling today. Congratulations to both of you. Rob? Saw you pull off a thrilling comeback, Mike. What were you thinking going into the half when you were trailing? I was shaking. I was scared. I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> And then in the first box, you came right out of the gates with a mark. How important was that for you? Very important. Um, you, you were calm under pressure up there. Is that something you pride yourself on, St. Calm? You got a lot of emotions going on up there. I wasn't. I was shaking. I wasn't good. I wasn't good under pressure. Well, next week, as we mentioned, they are going to take on Shannon Scribner and Michael McGinty. What do you think of that matchup? Can you take them? There's only enough room in this town for one Michael. It's true. It's me. It's you. <laughs> We'll find out who's, who's, who's the one Michael who can stay in this town next week. They're going on against two pretty strong contestants of their own, Dan. Yeah, Mike McGinty is definitely a strong contestant. He uh, has a tie for the high single ever thrown on our show. So he's thrown back-to-back -back huge games on our show through a big one a few weeks back with the pros. I don't know if he's got three in a row in him. It's going to be fun to find out. If that's not reason enough to tune in, I don't know what is. Make sure you join us for our final match next week on Candlepin New Generation. And you can check all of our matches on our website, CandlepinGeneration.com. We've been coming to you from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. And on behalf of our entire volunteer staff, he's Dan Shu Gauthier. I'm Rob Taylor. Thank you for watching Candlepin New Generation. Hi, Liam. Alright, one more time. Actually, like go back to where you were. <laughs> no, okay. You're like making this kid's life right now. Space, instead, it is a seven pin difference. I think it's, uh. Or am I wrong? Nine pin difference, rather. What happened there? What did I, what did I miss? I missed it too. I'm gonna edit it out. <laughs> Michael throwing the first ball. Dude, who's your opponent, Rob? Who do they have next week? That's a great question, Dan. I'm sure they're very good. Hold on one sec. Let me think of it and then I can cut. I can cut. <laughs> What's that? McGinty and Shannon Scribner. Shannon Scribner and Michael McGinty. Ooh, Dan. that's a challenging team.